Bill Weaver, Marco Sciences, Delta 11 pilot. Uh, this airplane is a standard airline version, highly modified. It used to fly for Air Canada for many years. Orbital purchased the airplane from Air Canada in 1992, had it modified to carry the Pegasus at Marshall Aerospace in Cambridge, England. That took about a year and a half. And we brought it back uh, from Cambridge in late 93. Started operating it. First mission, Pegasus mission out of Ann Arbor is June of 94. We've had 34 missions since then from various places. We can launch from any location that has appropriate range and tracking facilities and that includes Vanatar. Most of the launches have been out of Vanatar. But we also can take it anywhere, as I say, where they have the capability to accommodate these launches. And Van is one of those locations. And the uh, spacecraft requires an equatorial orbit. We've done launches for that purpose out of Kwajalein, uh, which is right near the equator. Have, have you personally flown the, the missions from Kwajalein in the past? Yeah, we have. This will be our fourth Kwajalein mission coming up. So, We've so what? launched out of Cape Canaveral and Wallops Island, and, uh, Grand Canary Island, Spain. Yeah. It's a nice trip. Yeah. <laughs> so, what's your ferry flight like the next couple of days? What's what's the trip out there like? Uh, it's fairly routine, except when we're carrying the Pegasus, we uh, can't exceed 250 knot indicated airspeed because of, uh, it's not a Pegasus issue, it's a payload guarantee, but for vibration, the vibration guarantee that orbital uh, is given to customers. <laughs> the vibrations in the uh, payload bay will not exceed a certain value. And above 250 knots uh, indicated airspeed, it becomes a marginal vibration bay, so we like to keep it at that level. And I gather once you get... Uh, That's a slow trip. It's <laughs> a slow trip. Yeah. So I gather once you get uh, in range, that you're actually going to fly your, your flight path? Uh, yeah, once we get to the launch location or the launch uh, facility, uh, the bank will be on the ground there at Quadrilene for, I think, about five, six days. we will be going through all kinds of additional checks and, uh, and on the actual launch date. This one is a 3:30 a.m. local time launch. Yeah. It's an early, early so, rise. so, so, what is your launch day like? When do you come on board, and, and what's your actual flight from takeoff uh, to drop we, like? We come on board about three hours before the launch drop time. And it's a very lengthy checklist. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to go back to the checklist opens. Five hours before the drop time. And they, uh, they go through numerous, numerous checks. Yes. Yeah. It's a very, uh, yeah. very deliberate yeah. process. You don't to cut any corners, you don't take any chances. And then the then actual launch time is normally an hour after takeoff. Uh, well, yeah. We'll, we'll figure out. But yeah. we're going to get off. That time is required. Long, right? Follow a predetermined flight path and get the airplane position at the drop point at the time and impact the exact drop location. There is a little margin there. That's what about the drop box window. And then a drop time, which we'd like to hit within a minute or two, which we all do. And then an exact heading. Heading is critical. We drop the rock at five seconds after you drop it. Uh, we sh should be established on that exact heading and then plus or minus two or three. Mm -hmm. so drop it, it lights off five seconds after you drop it. And they don't want the exit uh, to have to make any corrections to that heading. That's the heading that is designed to follow or programmed to follow. Uh, now, the actual. It's a three stage rock. 
stage one lights off. If 75 seconds in, drop it, stage one burns out, separates, stage two lights off, burns another 75 seconds. And then it, two, uh, drops off. Stage three continues on the order. Typically, uh, about 10 minutes after we release it or drop it, uh, it's positioned the payload of the satellite mm -hmm. into the end. So are you guys able to hear the, the, the flight yeah, we're itself? In, in contact the whole time, the whole flight, before, during, and after the uh, control center, the LCO launch control. And can, and can you talk a little bit about the the actual dropping itself? Is is it a ground it's, approval uh, to you guys to actually do well, it? Well, it's, it's uh, very evident that it's dropped. Yeah. You know, 52,000 pounds. Yeah. And when we drop it, Instantaneously lose 15,000 pounds, <laughs> 39,000 feet by 0.82 mark. We, we lose that, so the airplane kind of lifts up. There's also a 10% aft center gravity shift, so the nose goes up too, <laughs> which is good. <laughs> Separates us from the rocket. Yeah. So by the time it lights off, five seconds after we drop it, we've separated at least 2,000 feet. Uh, it, it's about 500 feet when it lights off. Below us, or I'll do a bunch of them. Uh, and we also do a heading change to stay out of the rocket exhaust, which is toxic to the engines. And you hear it? it oh boy, it sounds uh, it, it's a tr tr yeah, it's a tremendous jolt in the airplane when you're dropping. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, then the nose comes up, and, uh, it lights off, and it sounds like a freight train. It's a tremendous yeah. roar. Yeah. But Tommy, roll out of our heading change. Perspective is uh, looking out that window. And the rocket is going up like a rocket. <laughs> like a rocket. And can you like show us the, the actual drop button that you uh, you fire? This, no, this is the uh, it's a arm. This is the release button right there. And it can be dropped from either side. Normally the pilot flying is concentrating on heading and altitude and okay. the pilot not flying. Communicating with the control center throughout this process. So the control center gives you the approval yeah. and then you guys do it when you're ready. Launch, launch conductor, the LC, gives us the countdown. And at the countdown, it's uh, three, two, one, drop. So how many people are actually going to be on the aircraft during the ferry flight and then how many on during uh, the launch 19, itself? 19 on the ferry flight and then uh, on the actual drop uh, we required the pilot, the pilot, the flight engineer and then we got a backup pilot and flight engineer. When we launch out of a remote area like the flight engineer, we want to make sure we've got it covered. <laughs> So, Eb, are you the, the co-pilot? Are you the co-pilot for this flight? One of the co-pilots has to turn about. Philip, can you turn on the external lights for me, all of them? Uh, all these? Yep. And uh, all the other buttons. On the uh, bottom row, too? All the lights. Just turn all the lights on. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I, forgot, I have mentioned two additional crew members of the choir, launch panel operators. One LP, other LP, One is uh, controlling all the interfaces between the airplane and the Pegasus, the rocket. And the other is controlling all the interfaces between the airplane and the spacecraft, the payload bay. I see. So, yeah, they're they're really essential. And just just finally, uh, what's your what's your uh, career history? What uh, led you to being a Pegasus launcher? First, I got involved with the, uh, this airplane orbital in the very beginning when they got it. Uh, we ferried it after they uh, got, uh, got the airplane from Air Canada. They did the uh, tidal transfer to Marana, Arizona, and storage for two or three years. And they took it from, still an Air Canada airplane, took it from 
Ron Arizona and Cloud Storage to going to Delaware where they did the title transfer from Air Canada to Oregon. And after that, we directed to Cambridge to start the Ron program here, which is probably going to take us about a year and a half. It was a very extensive modification. So L1011 is your history then? Oh, yeah, we were, we were with Lockheed on the L1011 all three of us. So that's, I, I was in the beginning, and Ed was too. Bob came a little later, but still, what, 78, you know, we had a lot of, had a lot of experience. Yeah. So Bob, you're, yeah. you're the flight engineer? I'm the flight engineer. Can you tell us a little bit about your, what your duties are during the ferry flight and then the actual launch? Well, flight? basically, the monitoring systems of the aircraft, the hydraulics and environmental systems and the uh, electrical and fuel, manage that and the power the engines and stuff. So during the ferry, it's pretty uh, pretty basic. It's uh, really no different than any other L-1011 flying. During the actual launch, it gets uh, very busy up here. And Bill is tied up with the navigation and timing of uh, the waypoints. And Ev is uh, on the radios, and we have about four radios, three to four radios going on at one time, so everybody else is kind of listening, too. And then I'll handle the power, maintaining 250 up to altitude, and when we get within a minute, two minutes before the launch, accelerate up to about 0.82 Mach for the release of 39,000 feet. And your name is Bob? Bob Taylor. And you've been doing this for a long time. Pegasus flies? Well, like Bill said, I've been on the L-1011 since 78, wow. and uh, so we've been flying together ever since then. Yep.